and welcome to a very serious episode of A Screw Loose. It is Thursday, April 1st, 2021. We have a lot of very important flute-related maintenance tips to share with you tonight. Um, some exciting products to tell you about. Uh, some gardening tips. And many other things. And there's Douglas. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that's not Douglas. Who is that, this Rachel? Is, this is Blossom. She's, that's Blossom. she's visiting. Yeah. Yeah. And she Hi, just Blossom. wanted to sit here with me, so I figured it's okay. Oh, so cute. She's so cute. It's okay. Super cute. Such a little okay. lady. Indeed. <laughs> Um, so let's kick things off. Um, we have an important uh, message from the flute mechanic to uh, begin our show this evening. So here we go. Um, Rachel, is there anything you'd like to say about this important message while I, I get it started? Yeah, um, this demonstration was something that I feel like we really don't see enough of and it needs to be talked about more uh, because it's, it's very serious and um, you know, of course, no flutes were harmed in this demonstration, and I, I'm just saying that for, you know, reasons that <laughs> may or may not be apparent, but um, yeah, please enjoy this very informational video. Hi, my name is Rachel Simon. I'm the flute mechanic. Today, I'll be teaching you how to change your oil on your flute. First, we need to make sure we have the right tools. We'll need a screwdriver and uh, a drain pan for the oil. And of course, some jack stands, as well as a jack to safely lift the flute. Now, so very few people talk about how to jack up a flute properly, and it's so important. The first thing to keep in mind is safety first. For example, make sure your jack stands are rated for your flute. These are six ton, so I think we'll be okay. Next. Take your jack to safely lift the flute up onto the jack stands. You want to make sure you never get directly under the flute when you're doing this. Put your jack stands in position so that they'll be ready to go after you lift the flute. You want to make sure you get enough clearance so that you can get under there with the oil drain pan and uh, release the drain plug. All right. Perfect. Now let's gently let the flute down. Great. It's supported. Next, put your drain pan underneath the flute to catch any of the oil. And lastly, loosen the screw. And there she goes. The oil will slowly drip out. And uh, once it's done, you can refill it with new key oil. What a great video that was. Now, Rachel, I do have a question. Yes. Um, you know, you put it up on, on the jack and then you have that jack stand. And then you said something about letting it down. So you're saying get it up over so that way you can orient everything properly and then bring it down because we know these things weigh all of like what two pounds like super heavy yeah, yeah i mean this is like 300 grams we're talking about so you really want to make sure that you have things lined up and that you're not under the flute again i cannot stress that enough um right and and the 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 oil pan that is so we don't make like a crap ton mess everywhere right right it could be a very messy because I, Yeah, because I'm that person that does not anticipate messes and then suddenly I'm just like super sticky and it's like I have flubber between my hands and it's just, it's a mess. It's a um, common mistake. Okay. Yeah, and I'm right. sure that like proper ventilation is really, really important. Yeah, I should have been wearing safety glasses, but um, you know, it's just <laughs> my mind. Um, a lot, a lot of steps that people miss during a normal COA. I feel like so. I just wanted to um, bring the awareness of what the proper procedure was. Right. Well, I mean, here's the thing: without um, proper ventilation, am I, am I in the right, have well. Am I in the right place? Oh yes. Um, we have an interview scheduled. Um, you're yeah, a little bit do. early. Oh. Cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were just finishing up our Q and A. Is all we were doing because Rachel had so oh. many great tips. So basically, we're just saying for that demonstration video, I'm assuming since there was 
you know, audio and camera, that's why you didn't wear a mask, right? Right. You just dealt with the fumes, brain damage, you know, all the hell. That's fine. Right? <laughs> you, you are a real pro. Am I right? Hated by craft, yes. All right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Now, now we, I guess we have a new interview here. So, um, all right. Rachel, I yeah. guess you know what's, what, who this is. I don't. This is none other than Samara Stockhausen. Um, she's the founder of Flu, the world's most exclusive boutique for flute accessories. Um, and she's here to tell us a little bit about her latest finds. Welcome, Samara. Thank you. I'm so excited to be on your super cute show tonight. I just like cannot wait to like share everything with you. This is just gonna be just amazing. It's gonna be amazing. Thanks for having me. You have great hair, by the way. Oh. Thank you, Adam. It is fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. I grew up myself. <laughs> so, um, speaking of I can great tell. things, Rachel. Oh my God, I love that shirt. It must be vintage. Is that vintage? It looks vintage. Twelve ninety nine at Tractor Supply, off season. Oh, Tractor <laughs> Supply. Is that, is that a like, cute new place in Soho? I've heard about that. Oh my God, that sounds so amazing. Uh, so let's talk about flutes. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> we managed to collect some of the best new items for flutists. Um, why don't you tell us about this pad elixir that will get rid of sticky pads for good? Um, that sounds amazing. What's in it? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So it's the most effective stuff on the planet for your sticky pads. It's a proprietary blend of cleaning agents and a 1% solution derived from Emmanuel Pahoud's tears. He let me have them when I was on his yacht with him for the sunset service when he he held it for it was so sad his favorite head joint cork died and so you know he planned this amazing service it was so sweet he was so sweet so yeah I got, wow. I got some of his that, tears yeah it's amazing very moving stuff um very yeah. powerful um is mm -hmm. that I, that's very um you know, is that what makes it so good? And how do I get some? Um, I looked on your website and it looks like the payment button is grayed out. Oh, yes. Well, it is very exclusive. Um, and you know what? You you probably wouldn't use it right anyway. So like, um, just forget that you saw it. Forget that you saw it. Um, how's your dog? Um, Doug Miss, right? Doug Miss? How's Doug Miss Douglas. doing? Douglas. Uh, that's what I said. That's what I said, Douglas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's doing great. Um, he's loving meeting customers. Oh my God, he sounds so adorable. I just love dogs. I just love dogs. Um, that totally reminds me. I have a new thing called Dynamic Oscillation Gizmos. You should totally ask me about them. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Can you tell us about these Dynamic Oscillation? That spells dog. I get it, right? Uh, what, the OG. Does? what does? Never mind. Um, so. Okay, so what are these all about? Okay, okay, um, okay. So the dynamic oscillation gizmos are these cute little dots made of platinum or twenty-four karat gold. Yeah, and they sit right on top of the posts on your flute, and they interact with the metal molecules and release all the tightness in your flute. It's like yoga for your flute. So your flute totally vibrates, and it sounds better, better than ever. It's amazing. Wow. Wow. Um, how, so how does this work? Mm, well, Rachel, it's science. So um, the, the fusion bonds between the molecules align the cores of the atoms in the centers of the dynamic oscillation gizmos to the cores of the atoms in the centers of your flute post. And that sends a gentle vibration down the post and into the flute body. And it just expands the sound. And the vibrations are so gentle that they work on a nano level. And like, you won't even feel them. You won't even know that they're there. You're just gonna like hear this amazing result. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, uh, we are all it, about that. It's just science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have one more prize to talk about today, and this one is um, very intriguing. It's an emergency uh, fix kit that flutists can carry with them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's one of my favorite things. It's an exclusive offering that comes in a Judith Lieber Couture evening clutch encrusted in black Austrian crystals and inside. 
is a single serving bottle of Diva premium vodka. And the bottle stopper, this is the best part, the bottle stopper is programmed to send an automatic text message to your favorite flute technician requesting a callback the moment you remove it. So you get to sit back in style and take the edge off of your worries while your flute tech deals with all those messy little details. <laughs> That, that is brilliant. Um, that is something we really need. Um, I think people will be clamoring for it. It reminds me a lot of a product that's already out there for trombone players. Um, it's a paper bag with some grain alcohol and a beeper in it that you can mail to your brass pick. It does the same ew. thing. Rachel, ew. That's, uh, trombone players aren't animals. That's so like insulting to them. Why would you even say that? It's, it's real cool. I thought it would be funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what? <laughs> you guys are great. Mm -hmm. So it's green alcohol. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's been a pleasure hearing about your enticing lineup. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for this very serious episode. Yeah. Oh my God, Rachel, it's been so fun. We should totally do this again. We should totally do this again. Like um, anytime you just like, give me a call girl and we will like make this happen. Okay. We'll make it happen. It'll be amazing. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, that, that was a riveting um, interview. I really like that emergency fix kit um, does it, that comes with the shot of vodka. I think that's really inspiring. Right. right, I agree because basically what I learned from that interview is that if there's one thing I've learned, it's when it comes to, to the flute, you can't let little things get in your way. I mean, that's, that's basically what it is. You just have to do whatever it takes. So, you know, her product is obviously fabulous so bad i want to know if she ships internationally that's really important because you know it shouldn't be just like isolated to a small group of people it should be available to, to like food players all over the world you know well, gourmet shipping know. containers right i mean like like fancy yeah. crystal shipping boxes here's the thing though like i don't know how many of Emmanuel Poet's tears we have. So we might not be able to produce enough of the patty elixir. Like that's I mean, that's, that's very fair, but you know, like she she has been upfront in her marketing because, you know, I mean, she obviously didn't want to brag, but us weekly once described her as up for anything. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, obviously a marketing pro. Right? Hey guys, what I miss? What I miss? I, I had to go and um help Russ with something. I'm so sorry. I, I I don't like to do that during shows, but you missed the interview, but it's okay. It's oh, like okay. We, we How was she? Was it she was okay? pretty spectacular. Oh, oh good. Oh, I'll have to. I'll watch the episode after and like check it out. It was yeah. kind of life changing. Cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, was, I, can, I can't wait was, to see that. It was a fabulous text. It was yeah. such a, a fabulous like interview. Yeah, it was fabulous. Okay. Can't wait. Just a um, little bit flu is all it is. <laughs> so, 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 Kim, you have a story to tell. I do. Uh, as, as you know, everyone who watches the show on a regular basis knows I'm all the way, all, all the way up in Canada. And of course, COVID's been really hard for a lot of us. And one of the things that's happened locally is that, that we put together a bunch of like gardens and stuff like that normally I don't have time for this but it, with COVID you sort of have to make time so one of the things that I did this past year is that I started growing this um this garden uh, a bunch of people donated stuff so I had been growing some um some tomato plants and kale I think you have a picture actually of it and oh, my yeah. my okay. yeah and my my yard actually has like some wildflowers in it um, so this year I started, um, in addition to like the tomatoes and that I'm also going to start growing some parsley and sage. And can I, can I show if the you picture? see, the, yeah, show the picture. Okay, so here's the picture. So there's a picture with some den is with some, some like little daisies oh, yeah. and the kale oh. there. And then oh, you can kale. see, so, so I'm growing all these herbs and stuff like that. So there's like parsley that's, it hasn't come up quite yet and some sage and some rosemary and you can see some thyme there. Um, and that one actually, it, it overwinters here, so it's been great. And I was thinking, because, you know, import fees have been really, really stressful over COVID and shipping and the delays in manufacturing and layoffs, that I sort of had to get a little bit more resourceful with, with you know, being a little bit more self-sufficient and environmentally friendly as well. So one of the things that I tried to do this year is I actually 
have started um, trying to be more self-sufficient and regrow some things for the shop. Um, it, so if you can show the next picture, oh, the yeah, next picture see. shows um, what I've actually been doing this year and it's worked okay. really well so far. All right, here I, we I, there were some surprises though. Go. I, I, I will it? say it, it hasn't been oh. without its surprises. Wow. But if you see there, I, I've actually Whoa. been starting to, to you can see in the first picture there, um, I'm, I'm actually starting to regrow strawberry pads. And Amazing. so you plant them, it's very cool. You plant them and the trick is though, that mm -hmm. they actually grow on a vine, which is really neat. I was expecting oh. it to be more like a bush, but it turns out it's actually this vine Okay. Um, and it's worked really well. You get like three or four on like one little vine thing. The trick though is, and this has mm -hmm. been the part that has been so complicated is that it turns out, you know how there's so many sizes of the strawberry yeah. pad. Yeah. The problem is, is that they, they don't grow. Like if you plant one size, they don't stop at that size. So you have to go out and check them all the time with like, with like calipers. So yeah, yeah, every yeah. morning I get up and I have to pick um, them right at the exact time where they're like the right size that I need. Stressful, so that Kim. is, a, it is a little stressful. And a couple times I've had to run out in the middle of the night because I knew that they would grow too much now, overnight. Now have, you gotten, have you gotten any like alto flute size pads out of this? I, I haven't yet, but I'm hoping to because they don't make larger pads. So what right. I'm hoping is maybe if I can tend them. I could actually maybe grow some more and I'm kind of thinking that if I like I haven't done felt pads yet but I'm wondering if maybe I do um some like felt pads and some strawberries like in the same hole whether I might like get phoenix like pads oh that makes yeah, sense like a, yeah like a phoenix pad mm -hmm. um so I so I'm, wow. I'm trying this and I'm gonna see if I can graft and if this is successful then I think the next thing that I'm gonna look into is seeing if I can regrow partial shims into whole shims again. Oh, brilliant. Wow. Sort of like oh, sort of like celery. So yeah. I, like you know wow. how you can regrow celery and yeah, stuff like absolutely. that. So wow. so I'm sort of thinking that I'm gonna do that, but I think that probably I need to put those into like one of those little greenhousey things because they mm -hmm. seem pretty delicate. So yeah, I don't I, want but, get too much water. I mean yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I did not know that was even possible because I mean I'm sitting here gobsmacked and I'm I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm about to go full redneck on you. And I mean, looking at that, I'm like hellfire and save the matches, suck a duck and see what hatches. I mean, like that is so <laughs> I mean, cool. I, I have to say, I have to say that I, I I I did get the 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 idea this year from like last summer. Suddenly, a bag. Uh, an empty bag of strawberry pads ended up outside in the garden and I thought you know and yeah. I, I actually sent the picture to to Sue there and said yeah. hey oh my gosh this is in the garden and and it gave me this idea that maybe I could do it and I keep finding shims outside so mm -hmm. I'm thinking maybe they're a little bit like dandelions yeah. and I just yeah. haven't got the right balance yet. So I'm um, working on it. I, I if, the, if they are okay. like dandelions, Kim, if they are like dandelions, Kim, I'll let you know, I lose a lot of them in the wine aisle. I hope Yeah, uh -uh. <laughs> yeah it's, 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 gonna so, be, it's gonna be difficult. Kim, I have a, I have a question about the holes, yeah. like um, about what day of development do the holes start to appear? Like when they go oh, from like piccolo or trill pads to being like, you know. That's kind of interesting because it turns out, I thought that the holes were going to develop too, but it turns out okay. that they're specific breeds. Oh, they're separate so breeds. They're, oh, so they're separate okay. breeds. So like the trill pads are actually different than the closed hole pads wow. and the closed hole pads are actually different than the open hole pads. So okay. it's really kind of, it's kind of interesting. Wow. It's been a oh. learning curve. Wow. Um, it's, okay. it's really interesting, but I'm, I'm oh. excited about how next year is going to go because uh, yeah. I didn't really set aside very much space this year, but now I'm thinking that, that mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely the way to go um, for those yeah. of us that you're, live you're outside gonna have to, of like, the USA. I, I think yeah. this is, this is the way to go. Now, do you have like a technical school nearby where you could get some students to come and help you measure these pads? Because that's going to be pretty overwhelming if you start to get well, like crop. What I was kind of thinking is that once I start the pad farm, that what I would do is I would start like maybe help, having some of the junior high students from the local junior high maybe like come ag and ag yeah they could they, yeah. They, could what a come, they could come and help and and then they could sort of like use it as part of their their sort of like music education and science 
and agriculture. So it would be yeah. like a really holistic kind of way to approach it. Yeah. So this is this is what I'm thinking. And and then of course oh, yeah. I could give them a discount if I use the pads that they pick. I could <laughs> give them a discount on their repairs. Now, do you, do the stems come off cleanly or do you have to like do anything to make the that? The trick is that you have to let them dry. Oh, okay. okay. So oh. once you've like plucked them up, you kind of like, I, I usually clip them because they won't regrow off the same grant, the same part of the vine. Mm -hmm. So I usually clip them because the vine grows pretty quickly and mm -hmm. I leave them for like a couple days to sort of dry, kind of like pumpkin seed. Oh, and then you can like flick off the stem. And then you can kind of just flick them off and usually okay, it's pretty okay. good. Sometimes you have to kind of like, you know, like just, just like massage it a little tiny, but usually it, mm -hmm. it, it works pretty well. You take a little like Q-tip with like a bit of alcohol okay. on, on like if you get a sticky corner, but uh, cool. usually they're really good. That would be a great video for the Patreon sometime, Kim. Yeah, uh, for yeah. Sure. So I've, I've, I've got yeah, yeah. to make sure that I do, do that. It, it's been a little rainy here, so the, it's been a mm -hmm. bit unpredictable. Mm -hmm. And you do have to make sure that you pick them when it's not wet outside, because otherwise, like, they'll warp. So you mm -hmm. have to pick them when it's dr been dry for, like, a day or two, which, again, is really tricky when you're getting the pad sizing right. So I, mm -hmm. like, put a little canopy over a uh, part of it so that it that won't get sense. wet, so that they, so they grow flat. Yeah, you should totally awesome. do like a like a, yeah. a video series for not only us and other technicians, but like your local agriculture club. I mean, there's such a great crossover there. I know. And I mean, it's something you just never think about, right? You 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 yeah. think I have to buy this product all the time and you never think about being self-sufficient and being able to grow your own. Yeah. Amazing. Thank right. you so, so much, yeah. Kim. That was yeah. awesome. Such a great tip. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> so um Adam, you had you had some some tips about piccolo care, I believe, or or was it? Well, I, I just there? I just have well, it's I have I've spent quarantine um, in a largely introspective way, just because you know, not only am I re a repair technician, um, you know, I'm I'm also a piccolo maker, and I'm I'm quite young in my career at that, but part of becoming a maker is having a unique concept of sound you know and and identifying that and and i i remember when i was playing a lot studying and in a lot of um master classes and things you know i was always um told to find people that i really admired who were sort of like in my vein of sound um and and it was frequently recommended that i listened to people like Marina Piccinini and Christina Jennings. And anyway, one of my favorite albums out there is the Christina Jennings Winter Spirits album. And, you know, she was reviewed and and she just, she's a great, great musician. I had the, the great privilege of studying with her one summer through the Panoramic Flutist um, summer seminar that she did and that's where I met many of my my current colleagues in the in the flute repair business um but part of what I loved about Christina is that she she just has this really like pyrotechnic sound and and that that is a review that was given to her about her album literally they said a pyrotechnic sound and when you listen awesome. it makes perfect sense um but you know it's it's also hard to find a way to like add some fire to your sound you know especially if you're focusing on piccolo because piccolos are made out of wood they don't like fire you know but you need to have some way to add that like that ember luster to it you know that like glow that from from within um and i and i have figured out some things so as a technician i have realized that if you are in a position where you need to clean instruments in bulk. Most of us actually have the perfect tool at our ready disposal, and it's actually your dishwasher. Did you know that? It is your wow. dishwasher. Just put them all wow. in. You have all sorts of little rows and pegs. Just put them in, run them through the dishwasher on the steam cycle. Mm -hmm. And not only will the flutes be spotless, the pads will be nice and fluffy, give you that really thick, plush sound. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the catch is, is that the piccolos, they can become a little bit waterlogged. Just a little. But if you are not a technician, just a little. We're only on the steam cycle. 
No, I we're not on the heavy pots and pans. Yeah, it makes, yeah. Anyway, okay. that's my question. Yeah. Right. So if you're a technician, you can do this to help get the extra water out after you've cleaned it. But if you are a player, if you want to add some like extra fire to your sound, um, all you need to do is just pop that sucker in your oven, set it to broil two days later. It is going to have the most smoky, textured, luscious sound you have ever, mm -hmm. ever experienced. Like it is fabulous. I mean, wow. it and is like really crisp attacks, I would imagine. Very crisp. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, if you, if you, articulate with the TTT rather than a DVD, you are just going to cleave your conductor's brain clean in half. Okay. Amazing. So it is Amazing. the best thing you can imagine. Yeah. So just pop your piccolo. It doesn't matter if it's key for a homig or like whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Just chuck that suck in your, sucker in your oven, set it to broil on high. Two days later, you are solid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're just going to have the smokiest Judy Garland old world jazz sound in there that I really like to find because most piccolos nowadays are just either so small and compact in their sound or they're just so brazen that they lose that sort of smoky nuance. Yeah. You get what now, I'm saying? Adam, are, are you- It's almost like away? a char. <laughs> Sorry, which one I, of you first? Oh, I, I was just gonna ask if you're, are you giving us some of the secrets that you use in making your own piccolos? <gasps> Adam, we feel so privileged. Thank you. Wow. I mean, it's it's probably Amazing. like after like like two days under the broiler, it's probably almost like the piccolo becomes so ethereal that like the body just disappears. But it does hold together. That's the thing. I mean, wood part of the seasoning and aging process is getting it as dry as possible. This and is true. I mean, now, I do know some makers that cut corners, and do you know what they do? First of all, they take their wood and they bury it under the ground in their backyard. And I'm not kidding you about that, because I this was like those. Milk. This is like those uh, Chinese eggs that you bury, and then they turn black. Right. And I, I was yeah. actually trained as an oboe maker, and I know an oboe maker that not only buried some of his wood under his backyard, he then lost it. He doesn't remember where it is. <laughs> now that they, so, this person no, would not make a good serial killer <laughs> right he would not either that or he would that's or the no pirate treasure but no this this is actually a legitimate you know a baroque oboe maker that buried his boxwood in his backyard and some of it that he doesn't know where it's at so anyway he it, it is highly recommended amongst some instrument makers that feel they need to cut corners for production costs you know because as an as a maker we have to cut dealers a percentage in order for them to make money because if they don't make money they won't sell our stuff right so a lot of these makers rather than you know put it in the oven on set on broil for two days do you know what they'll do they'll just put it in the microwave and they'll nuke it for two hours seriously are you kidding me oh no i'm actually not kidding you um, i'm not kidding I, mean, you. I wish i didn't know that because like it just makes me think less i'm of. not paying for a microwave piccolo i'm paying for an right? oven piccolo. that's like going to a nice restaurant and like them microwaving your broccoli like that is not yeah this is want. this is you not know? nukes eatery this is yeah. not a fast food restaurant no. this no. is a haute couture you know instrument mm -hmm. you know so we have to we have to handle this Standards. all very Exactly. We have, yeah. standards. We have standards. And it's it's because, correction. Exactly. And it is because I am sharing some of my innermost secrets as, mm -hmm. as a maker. You know, mm -hmm. I dig my wood up out of the backyard and then I pop it in the oven mm -hmm. on broil, except I'll be honest, I don't do it for two days. I do it for two weeks. The fire wow. department goes by a couple of times and I'm like, nah, I'm good. You got, I got it. <laughs> um, I'm sure it smells great. Yeah, because I know that burning granadella is a wonderful uh, smell. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's mm -hmm. it's like, like dark chocolate. If yeah. I'm honest. now, have you ever? Well, tried and you know, it's it's kind of funny popcorn. because most most people don't realize this, but like makers are always talking about seasoning the 
wood. And obviously, if you're going to cook it in the oven for like two weeks, proper seasoning is going to be very important. Well, uh, my my thought though, Adam, is have you considered using like an outdoor like wood fired like pizza oven for this? Because I think that you could get some Whoa. really interesting results. Well, I've thought about that, but I also know that Burkhart stores their wood in a tower, which is like somewhat outdoors. And I don't want to infringe on proprietary information, you know, because Burkhart, they're some of the best makers in the history of the whole world. And I don't want to get on their bad side because mm -hmm. I like them. They are my friends. <laughs> so, um, cool. but that's, wow. those are some of my secrets as, as a maker, Amazing. but because I have divulged some of those secrets as a maker. I'm just also gonna share with you some of my secrets as a technician on some things. The, these are two people that I really admire their YouTube and web like oh. presence, you know? Oh, yes. And I, I remember I first saw some of their content before I even entered this business. And I was like, oh my God, they really know exactly what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I just figured, you know, I went way back in their archives and I've pulled up one of their early videos where they have some really awesome user-friendly, player-friendly content on how to maintain the cleanliness of your instrument. Things that your technician will not tell you about because your technician is trying to get rich off. Are we, are, okay. are we are we are we allowed to do this on our show i mean this is like i mean we shouldn't be saying I mean, it's top secret right, i tell you right it's it's top secret stuff but they uploaded it a long time ago and anyway it it's you know, on the internet here. so it obviously yeah. must be true and it must be free so yeah. that's that's all that i can say everything so, on the I, internet is true Mm -hmm. It has to be true. It, it has. It is I mean, everything you you know. Abraham Lincoln said that. So. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. And That's I mean, me. I watched. I watched the lie. internet. So. I watched. I watched a documentary the other day that said the Ark of the Covenant was this ancient alien battery that floated around, and it just gave us modern humans, and it's fine. Oh, and that yeah. must be the truth. So. so now, since we are on the internet talking about things on the internet, it's like doubly oh true. I know. Yeah, it must be it's the full, triple, quadru quadru like qu quadruply true, quadruply, <laughs> right? That's yes. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, yeah. Blossom yeah. is like yawning and smiling her approval, right? So yeah, let me true. let me show with you guys. Okay. Um, let me show you guys this video that they uploaded, and I've kept it super secret. Did okay. You hear that? Super secret. Oh my God! Ow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, but I'm going to share this video with you guys because I'm so excited. They have the real truth on how to maintain your instrument at home. Okay. Are you guys okay. ready? I, I think yeah. so. Okay. I'm going to try to do this because I've never shared a screen before. Okay. <laughs> cool. Can you all see these? It's a YouTube video. Can no. you see it? No. Hang on, hang on. How do I do this? Um, you hit share screen. And then, oh yeah okay where's that at the bottom in the center oh yeah share screen okay mm -hmm. and then click the two little check boxes in the bottom left that like say your sound optimized for video yes. yep you got it i mean i'm obviously oh. educated we see it's something working. it's black um it's working though drag the window hold on the i have screen. to i have to enter my um oh okay emergency. he's thinking he's thinking got it got it got it Wow. So Adam, oh, 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 look at, they look like heroes. There we go. Wow. You can tell the hair they're doing. You can really tell. I mean, just their posture, really. Yeah. Yep. yep. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right. Yep. Okay. Okay. This It's called hit. Flute Lesson 6, Flute Maintenance. Cool. You got hit, it? Hit, hit full screen on the, on the, on the video. Yeah, of course. I just, I've never Let's used it before because i am obviously a technical master right true true yeah all right um, that cool. one yeah yeah oh, there we go. oh my god they're so loud they play <laughs> butamus 
They do. They must be really Good morning, y'all. Sean here. And Sheila. And welcome to another episode of Too Cute. Stick out the letters. Good rehearsal, Tam. Great rehearsal. You know what really annoys me is people who don't know how to take care of their Oh, flutes. my God. There are so many girls at my school that just put their flutes away in their cases, and they don't even clean them or anything. Oh, you know, horrible. we should tell the people how to take care of their flutes. It's terrible. you got to have a case. This okay. is uh, the best case. Uh, Sean and I have the same one. Mine's pink. Mine's blue. Um, oh, boy. The best part about these cases is probably the fact that they're big and that you got this great pocket. I love to keep things in here, uh, just in case. Yeah. Like, oh, like I have some gum in mine uh -huh. because sometimes my flu smells Me bad. Too. And so I just like to have some gum in there. And a little secret, I put a little piece of gum in my flute um, so that it just stays in there and it always smells good. Whoa. It's because he has bad breath. Oh, it's like an air freshener. Um, well, thing that I love the most is the spit rag. Uh, I clean my flu. Usually the first step is unscrew the top a little bit and then oh put it back a little bit. And then you just give it a tug and boom. Wow. The lid comes off. That's so and efficient. Then you put the string it is. That's the best way to do it. Pull the lid off. Yeah. I haven't taken it out the other way before coming. Right? The spit's gone. Um, well, oh, yeah. mine's different. Oh, yeah. um, my friend gave me this, and so I like to use that. And then you just get some toilet paper, which I always keep in my case, and you just stick it right through the eyelet there. Yes. Okay. And then you put it right in the flute, send it on up. Whoo! There you go. Nice and clean. I hope today you will. Um, one of the things I keep in my case. Um, I do marching band a lot, and so I keep sunglasses in here so the sun doesn't hurt my face. And also, uh, I have asthma, so my mom gave me a fan, so that way I can stay super cool even in the sun. Um, I have band-aids because sometimes um, people cut me with their flu, and so I have band-aids to make sure that I'm safe. Uh, another thing in your flute case is really nice to have some snacks. I have a lifesaver from Oh, that months. reminds me. I have my Oreo left in here from lunch. Oh, well, that's good. Mm. See you with the bet. Um, now, the last, probably the last part is the shiny rag. Um, it's meant for making your flute look super shiny. Um, you just kind of wipe it down, just like so. Um. My mom always told me that you should just spit a little on the flute and then just rub it in. So, mm. and then just oh, rub it in, and that's why yeah. that's why my flute is so shiny. I mean, mine's actually a little bit shinier. Mm. You can no. probably see it in the head joint right mine's there. Mine's shinier. But um, if you really want to have a great and deep clean, uh, you can just give your flute a bath outside with a hose. I love doing it. Let's go show them. Yeah. Oh my goodness. At the car wash. Good technique. Yeah. I, I want to talk about how this compares to the dishwasher method because I think you get slightly different results. You know. You do. You do. Yeah. You get different results. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I, I just want to at some point credit the geniuses who made that video because I think they're my heroes. So um, right? they are they are so smart. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. I, I wish I would have come up with that first. Um and <laughs> so pretty. I mean, did you see her eyebrow? Yeah, thick. Yeah. Let's, it the good. details it was were fabulous. Thick. Yes. I, I, I believe the kids say they were on fleek. Fleek, yes, fleek. or whatever their words are now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the um, five gallon method versus the dishwasher. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's subtle. Not, it is. I mean, we saw it in action. The five gallon method actually uses more water per flute because, mm -hmm. I mean, you can put lots of flutes in a dishwasher. Did you know that? And I mean, what? if if you. 
I mean, eh, you, could cram a, you could you could fit a lot in that bucket too. I mean, that is very true. But you know, they'd all be like ramming into each other and scratching each other, and we want yeah, our food to be. That's cute. true. That's true. But if um, you could, like, the lid on the bucket could you just shake them all up? That's very <laughs> true. I mean, I, if you were to like I, shake them all up, yeah, then you, you could have like it. like that pen pebble well, finish. I find it, yes, and I find that it really enhances the vibrational properties of the flute yeah. too. Especially, yeah. especially mm -hmm. if you put the lid on it and roll it down the driveway. That one, yes, depending fantastic. on your driveway. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. down the street, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Or down a big hill, it doesn't. I find matter. that over like a twenty percent grade, you start to get like dents in the body. So like, it's better to yeah. you know keep it at a slightly less yeah, steep that's, angle that's, yeah that's fine um you know the only thing that the the bucket method does not offer though is it doesn't have a steam function you know my dishwasher does have a steam function well yeah. if you put it on a campfire though would that like work maybe like one of those oh pizza ovens we were talking about that or earlier we could put it in a pizza oven I think, well, so like I, for example, don't have a dishwasher, but I do have an espresso machine. So like I have my steam wand on my espresso machine, which oh. is like, yeah, yep. And it fits right down in there. You can just shoot that steam right, right up inside and then turn it around and get the outside. It takes a little longer than the dishwasher, but like, I find that I can be a little more precise with it. Earl, you have options. Mm -hmm. Well, I and I live right by the ocean, so I could like rinse it in the ocean water because then it would have like minerals and things in it. Oh, yeah, sure. both of you. It may enhance the sound. Both of you two are the one percent. Those are problems of the one percent. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I mean, so like, you know. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, um, like, I bought oh, my espresso machine Keller. 18 years ago on sale I'm at Keller. Starbucks when I'm I worked jealous. there. <laughs> I'm jealous. It does not matter. I'm jealous. I actually moved the ocean to my house because I used to live in the prairies and I like I was done with that. So I actually moved the ocean and some mountains mm. to my house. It was pretty, I mean, it was expensive, but it was so worth it. Why doesn't That's everybody do that? I right. don't Girl, know. You got money. You got money, honey. Yeah. Well, I, I, I do this. I mean, I, I, I can afford at least a package of ramen noodles a day and an ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fabulous. I wish I could. I, I know. Right. And uh, like electricity and things. That's this is crazy. Cool. Okay. So, my friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, oh, you know, we forgot to do our usual disclaimers at the beginning of the show. Of all the shows? I thought about that, but I realized, you know, we have intelligent viewers. We do, we do. we should already remember this because mm -hmm. our, our viewers know to watch us, so they must be genius. They must be genius. This, this is true. Awesome. And YouTube has a splash screen feature that I'm sure we'll put something about in the very first when it hits YouTube. So out of context, people yes, will. Any, anything we said this evening may or may not be beneficial to you mm. specifically. I'm going to no. <laughs> I wish I could grow pads. That would be so cost effective. I, I, so. I, 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 I need to. I hope that um, next year, April 1st, also falls on a Thursday, but if it doesn't, maybe we'll have to make it. <laughs> um, so this was uh, really fun to do, and like I know that we all sort of put our things together last second, but this was super duper fun, and I almost don't care if there's nobody watching because I had such a good time. It was just fun. <laughs> so, but I, thank I you. can't believe we filled an app. I can't believe we filled it well, we started like 20 minutes late, but um, <laughs> it was a lot of time. That was the it April was. Fool's part. Oh, right. Um, so yeah, no, that totally was an hour. Um, so thank you to those of people who did tune in and who do support us and who watch us. And for all the people who are going to check this out later on YouTube, once they find out how hilarious it was and they don't want to miss it. Um, and there are so... questions and I will answer them. Oh, fantastic. There were, there were, there were questions about the growing of the, the flute pad. So I'll, I'll get, really... I'll, I'll get on that and make sure that I, I mean, that's answer cheap. those. 
And maybe yeah. we could tag Joel and see if um, Joel Straubinger has anything to say because that absolutely be... yes, yeah. They I have think. a great property. They could like they could bring yeah. Up. They have that or vine out is the case between would be. the house and the shop. They have all that like grass space that could totally be using. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, they live there by the shop. I didn't know that. Yeah, their house is right behind the shop. Like if you're yeah. in the parking lot looking at the shop, it's the house to the right. It's the house. It's no the wonder thing. I had such a hard time finding their shop because <laughs> yeah. I was like, "This is such it's behind a the house." Location. And now I, <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is only like six years in the making. <laughs> I whatever. Okay. Revel- <laughs> Revelations for Adam. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. The house that the house yes. is is in front of or next door to the shop. However, you orientate yeah. yourself. I had no idea. <laughs> I I did. I had no idea until right now. So obviously, I'm being you know. So the show was truly educational for you. That's so See, great. It was, <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is uh, why they can always be there at short notice or two. It is not actually a transporter they have. It's just proximity. Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, friends. This was amazing. Thank you, everyone. Um, next week, we have our uh, Patreon player chat. So we will be talking with our player mm-hmm. patrons on a subject yet to be determined so if you are a player patron or you want to be a player patron go ahead and sign up and let us know what you want to talk about otherwise we will pick something um which will i'm sure work out well because it has so far yes and we also have our wednesday work along this week oh yeah that's right work along wednesday for our tech patrons Mm -hmm. yeah yep so that's always a great great time so always a great time so please um join us with that bring your questions about what we discussed this evening um we'll have more in depth techniques and yeah absolutely so yeah fabulous all right thank you everyone have an awesome night and happy Happy April (laughs) first